Welcome, welcome to our live today. We're going to be talking about the ways that we use essential oils every day. It really surprises me how many ways there are to use essential oils. And when I get talking to people, they know a few of them. So I'm really excited about this today. Hopefully you guys can hear us and everything goes well. Um, please take just a minute and share this out on your pages and let's get some people. It's always more fun with more people so that we can get some comments and and we can we like to hear from all of you. So. All right, well, let's dive right in and, and do this. It's going to be, I'm really excited about this one. It took me a long time. I, I did a PowerPoint to go with it, and I've actually taught this one in groups a couple of times. So I'm really excited about this one. And I'm along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything I learned, I learned from her, but I did put this PowerPoint together. So most of you are going to be hearing from me today. Hope that's, hope that's all right. All righty, so let's start with um, the ways that we use essential oils. And I think really before we can talk about too much, about ways to use them, we need to understand why we use them. I think why is just as important as how. So we're gonna take just a few minutes and talk about why you'd want to use these amazing essential oils. If you're not new to essential oils and this first few minutes really bores you to tears, I, I apologize, but I really wanna cover just the basics. Of course, the basic basics take a five hour oil class or at least a two hour <laughs> really minimum oil class, uh, both of which are available on our YouTube channel and you can watch those anytime you want for free. So this is by no means a replacement for that. It's just a couple of minutes real quick to get you the basic basics. Okay, why would you want to use essential oils? Well, first of all, essential oils have a very small molecular structure. And that means that they're, they're able to be absorbed readily into the air and then absorbed into our bodies through the olfactory system and our respiratory systems. And a bit poured on the bottoms of your feet. And <laughs> we're we're going to cover all of that. Okay. okay. I didn't write this one, so nope. I'll be chiming in and she'll be telling me. This is going to be great. Another major reason to use them is because they dis they when they're diffused, they purify the air and they remove metallic particles and toxins from the air. They increase ozone and negative ions. And that inhibits bacteria growth. It destroys odors and molds from cigarettes or animals, anything that might be filling your your air with a bad smell. It replaces it and leaves it with a fresh, beautiful, healing, uplifting scent. So that's a, a great way reason to use them. The third one is that they contain hundreds of constituents, which means if you're diffusing it for one thing, you're actually getting the benefits of hundreds of other things. Like lavender is well known for being calming and relaxing, but it's also a great um, oil for burns. It has a million other uses. It has, it has hundreds of different constituents. And so no matter what you're using it for, you're also getting all the other benefits that you may not even know about. So there are some oils that are too strong to be diffused. Um, these are resins mostly, and so we don't diffuse those. We're going to show you some other ways to use them. So well, and some fun. oils, lavender, not so much, but it does have that peppermint. Um, a little is calming, a lot is not. And one, of, one of the disasters with diffusing oil if you, <laughs> is that you tend to get used to it. Your olfactory system gets used to what it's hit smelling, and you'll add more and add more. Then you step outside and step back in and realize that, you maybe got a little more than you need. You only need a little. <laughs> so. I had a cool experience with peppermint the other day. I picked up about a box of 100 bath bombs, and I was 45 minutes away from home. And I put those in my car, and I drove home. I, they were so strong. <laughs> I didn't worry about staying awake, and I can still smell them 45 minutes later. It was very strong. It was, it was wonderful, though. Oh, I drove to St. So George once to teach a class. So I, I, <laughs> I drove since the early morning, taught all day, and then cleaned up and drove home. And when I got to Payson coming back, of course, I was diffusing peppermint to keep me awake. I got out at Walmart, walked in, think I'm going to have to dig back there and find some more peppermint. Mm. I could actually smell my van two rows away before I got close <laughs> enough to open the door. Yeah. To, to my olfactory system, it had dissipated, but not in the least. <laughs> so. All right. Another really cool thing about essential oils is that they are all antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, antitumoral, antiparasitic antiseptic, anti-everything. Now, there's going to be some that are going to be more antibacterial than others, and some are going to be more antifungal than others, but all of them contain all of those properties. So it really doesn't matter if you need one. Grab whatever's close and, you know, look up what's better later. But I choose my cleaning oils by emotional pattern. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter. Orange, lime, you know. They're all going to do all <laughs> of those going things. To okay. One thing I really want to touch on is that they have a positive effect on the internal organs when they're applied externally to the body. And this is explained by Hilton's Law of Physics, which states that the nerve which supplies the joint also supplies the muscles which move the joint and the skin over the joint. 
So that that, that, reverse, yeah, that law really applies to essential oils. They travel through the body and they go where they're needed very quickly. Um, peppermint rubbed on the feet has been found under the tongue in as little as 20 minutes. Out of our, our oh. I guess they did. Yeah. Uh, so peppermint does it. Yeah. It, all of them do it. But they all are the stronger, amazing. stronger the taste. <laughs> Rub them on and they will go where they are needed. Okay. Another thing about essential oils, we're almost through this, I promise, is that all essential oils are cytophylactic. Now, there are some that are going to be more cytophylactic than others, but let's tell you. Such as heliochrism. Yeah. Geranium. Cytophylactic means that they stimulate the generation of new cells. So that's really useful following any kind of a wound or a surgery or burns. But all of them are. Now, the ones that are a particular note in this category, she said, was heliochrism. Um, Yarrow is one of my favorites. Patchouli. Yeah. Patchouli. Lavender is another one. As far and um, neroli, raven and geranium. Coriander. Coriander is, coriander is excellent. Yep. Geranium surprising. That's always surprised me that it's an excellent burn oil. We don't use it that way very often because I can't stand the smell of geraniums. But <laughs> not yeah, either, one, of, one of the best ones is geranium for that. I love life. heliochrism. That's, that's yeah, my that's where I reach too. Yeah. That Julie was what your father loved after he's burned. So okay, you want to do the, tell them all about the sesquiterpenes. I love that word, <laughs> but I struggle with it sometimes. Cross the blood brain barrier. It's that's little membrane supposedly that keeps things from delicate areas of your brain. Of course, there's a lot of drugs that cross that blood brain barrier too, so that's kind of nasty. But there's a lot of oils that have a lot of it. Frankincense is probably the most well known, mm -hmm. although if you get a list of common essential oils and their percentages, it's number 18. It's not so. one of the highest sesquiterpenes. <laughs> but the beauty of frankincense is the other constituents. The, side of the sesquiterpenes in it carry those constituents along with them. Yep. But cedarwood and sandalwood are the ones with the highest amount of it in. So why, why do you want it to do that? Because ox they carry oxygen molecules with them as they cross. And oxygen and is all healing. of their lovely healing properties. <laughs> and once, once it's crossed into the brain, then it can also affect the limbic system. And the limbic system affects things. The connection between the left and the right sides of the brain, yeah. which is so important to, to so, balance thinking in your life. So. There's a list of essential oils that contain sesquiterpenes in significant amounts, and I'm just going to read them really quick. There's cedarwood. Started at the top at the highest percentage. I, I think there actually could, could have been cedarwood, patchouli, sandalwood, ginger, blue cypress, myrrh, vetiver, chaste tree, chamomile, and the German one is the one that's listed, although I don't know. Does the Roman, Roman has a little bit. It's way down. It's, it's way not down near as much as the German. Black pepper, spikenard. Ylang and yarrow. And yarrow is actually one of my favorite ones to use initially on a cut. And that's because of the ability it has to close the wound. And it's also cytophylactic. <laughs> and it's going to start to yeah. heal it too. So sometimes that's all I use. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was one more. Well, oh, and then frankincense. Nothing like sandalwood. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, real quick, we got to tell you a little bit. Oh, I'm messing up my slideshow. Emotional improvements? Yeah, about the emotional imp improvements. Um, you cannot use an essential oil without it affecting the emotions. Even if you're using it for a physical thing, like say you cut your finger really deep and you dump yarrow on it, for the cytophylactic properties, for the ability that it's going to pull that thing together, for the disinfecting properties, you're still going to get the emotional improvements as well. And this is because in the limbic system of the brain, there is a gland that's called the amygdala. And it's directly connected to that olfactory bulb, which is right where oils go when we're diffusing them. And you can't dump it on your finger without getting some into the air. So you've just done both. Anyway. Mingala, the Brain Solution Center. Will yep. I look for a fix or will I look for something to whine about? <laughs> and if the oil can go in and, and change that perspective to where you're looking for solutions, you're looking with gratitude, you're looking with faith that you dealt with it before, you can do it again. Yep. Instead of looking for reasons why you're going to fail or reasons why you should gripe and complain and go back to bed. An important thing, and essential oils affect that amygdala. Amazing yeah. thing. It, it's amazing. They've been doing some research on Tibetan monks when they many, many years ago. when they do um, meditation, and they tapped into this amygdala. And amygdala, sorry, screwed that word up. And they're finding that with essential oils, you can actually release those traumatic memories through meditation. These essential oils, because they're getting into that limbic system of the brain through the olfactory system. So it's a fascinating study. My favorite study was they did with some Tibetan monks in meditation and some of the older 
fellows, their amygdalas lit up better than the younger ones. Huh. So they visited with them about what it is they thought about when they med meditated. And the older monks who got the highest ratings on their amygdala, amygdala coming to life said that their meditation always centered on something that had happened. Like I had a little altercation with brother so-and-so yesterday. How could I have handled that better? Their meditation was on solutions. Whereas the younger ones had bought into this philosophy, the Pollyanna philosophy, they, they were trying to think good thoughts, think up great thoughts. The amygdala is lit up when you're looking for a solution. When you're looking for a solution, so the solution it, center of the brain. It's an amazing, amazing thing. So. Okay, so now we're on to the, the fun part, ways <laughs> to use essential oil. And there are so many ways to use essential oils. But when I visit people, they really only know about two or three. And they know about the most popular ones. Um, the most popular one being with the diffuser. And I find this really fascinating because I've been using essential oils for years before I owned a diffuser. Well, let's see, I'm doing a, a working on a blog right now on ways to diffuse oils without spending a ton of money. Without, without using <laughs> so, a diffuser. We're going to cover a couple of them here for butterfly sales, but it'll be informative. That's right. The reason um, that I was able to use essential oils for years without owning a diffuser is because diffusing essential oils is actually a method of using essential oils called olfactory administration and you don't need a diffuser to use it. <laughs> no. So let's go through some um, real quick, some reasons that you would want to use olfactory administration. Sorry, I'm really messing up this PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, odor molecules. The thing they travel to the top of the nasal cavity and they fit like little puzzle pieces into the specific receptor cells and there's nearly 10 million olfactory nerve cells and these millions of nerve cells they serve to transfer electric impulses to the olfactory bulb which in turn sends those impulses along the amygdala which we've been talking about and then to the limbic system of the brain now the um, the amygdala is directly responsible for releasing and storing emotional trauma how it does it like yep. explained it is am i looking for a solution or am i looking for a reason to be a victim that's and that's, that's the only way that you can affect this amygdala is through thought and through smells yeah. so essential oils become pretty important now one one way to think about this um well, actually we're going to cover that here in a second All right. but let's talk about the limbic system of the brain okay so since we can we can get into the limbic system of the brain why would we want to it's because the limbic system of the brain controls things like heart rate blood pressure breathing of course memory our stress levels and even hormones are affected by the limbic system of the brain and if the child doesn't slip from the left quadrants of his brain to the right easily he will be diagnosed as having a learning disability because one side is math mm -hmm. and one side is is the more creative thing you know you need to slide back and forth freely and that is affected yeah. by the limbic system essential oils can be incredible for learning disability things. Yeah. Sense of smell is very closely related to memory. Yep. Um, olfactory memories are very accurate and they're they're almost indelible. So since the olfactory system is literally the doorway to the subconscious, it would be logical to use aromatherapy and psychotherapy to uh, to get into those memories and release them. It's literally a doorway to the subconscious. Um, but the problem they're having with this is, is they study essential oils and they study this, um, what do you call it? I don't know. I really no, <laughs> the memories that you stored in your subconscious, but everybody's different. And the sense of smell affects different people differently. Almost all of us, when we walk into a house and there's fresh bread, that will bring up positive memories for almost everybody. But there's going to be that odd person that it doesn't. And so it's, it's a hard thing to, to, it's a hard science to perfect. But with essential oils, they're finding that almost all of them will affect certain people the same way um so you you know you'll read something that says this is a very calming whatever oil and it will be for 99 people but for one person it might not be and that is because we all have different associations with our with our sense of smells well so can i sidetrack it i'm sure, sure. i haven't included this so one odd thing that i found over the years both as a foot zonist and working with essential oils is that as you trigger these parts of the brain it will trigger memories one of my favorite stories was of a, a friend who was absolutely sure her teenage boys were smoking. Hmm. Now she grew up in the home of a smoker. That was something that was, but it had been years, years. And I kept trying to explain to her that I was pretty sure this was just what it, you yes. know, a cleaning out part of the, of the brain thing. And sure enough, after two or three weeks, the smell of those cigarettes that she thought oh, was really? hanging in the air went away. 
I'm 100% certain the boys had not taken up smoking, and I did keep her from smacking them. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that so many times. The oils will trigger an olfactory memory so okay. that the emotions, the emotions can be cleared that were behind it. And it's temporary, so, you know, hang on for the ride. Yeah, but you can use essential oils to release emotional trauma. That makes them very I think useful. that's what it did for this lady. It released what was that needed to be let go of. Yeah. yeah, I actually had an experience without myself. Everything in my room, it smelled like here, and it didn't matter how many times I washed the carpet, <laughs> washed blankets. I couldn't find the so source of smell. I was crawling on my hands and knees, smelling my carpet. It didn't smell like it, but I didn't matter what. And it took a long time before it finally just, my husband would be like, there's nothing. It's fine. <laughs> I'm like, you just can't smell it. But it was so strong. That I, for me, it's the smell of smoke. Imagine oh. why, you know, I mean, fire smoke. <laughs> imagine, oh. imagine that. Yeah. Sometimes if I use a new oil, it will trigger that for a day or two. That's right. And I'll run around going, hun, hun. What's yeah. <laughs> so diffusing essential oils. I don't know what I just did. Well, it's still looking good over here. You put it on. There you go. Yeah. Diffusing yeah. essential oils is an olfactory way of using them. And we already pretty much talked about why um, you'd want to, but you don't need to buy an expensive diffuser. Cotton ball in a front cotton of a fan. Ball or in front a of a fan. Yeah, this is in a car vent. And the reason I've pictured it this way is because if you put essential oils on the cotton ball and just stick them in the vent of your car, they can actually deteriorate the plastic and, the plastic. and you can be not so happy with it. Yeah, I just accordion fold <laughs> a piece of paper and stick it in there and stick the oil on yeah, there. Yeah, but. but you can use a fan, any, any type of a vent system will get them out into the air. Yeah. Um, another olfactory way of using essential oils is pretty simple. It's just sniffing them. Take the lid off and smell it. Yeah, that lets a lot of the upper notes get away, and pretty soon your bottle isn't quite what it was before. So we'll <laughs> talk about some ways to avoid that, yeah. too. Um, Don't do that one too often. A couple of way reasons that you'd want to do this or, or instances would be with the oil migraine. And my father-in-law does yes. migraines. Um, now, not all migraines are going to respond to this oil, and that's a common misconception. Anyone does migraines buys it. If you have a headache because you have not drank water for 24 hours and you're severely dehydrated, smelling this oil is this not going help. to fix it. <laughs> uh, if it's a hormone thing, this is not going to fix it. This is for true migraines. And he has discovered in the 20-something years he's known me that if he carries that in his pocket and he starts at a very onset of a headache, it'll stop at cold. So there's never been a time in the last 20 years where I've needed this oil. No matter where we are, he's going to have it on him. Well, the thing Always. is, to put a few drops on a cotton ball in a tiny little plastic a bag, bag in your purse. I, I went to sleep once with a breezy on, you know, I was sniffing it. I was going to sniff it a couple of times, huh. fell asleep, and it dumped all over my chest. That oh, was no. not fun. The Too rash much. that I got. But, uh, you know, a, a little bit on a cotton ball. Works you don't really need well. to be taking the lid off your bottle constantly, yeah. forever. <laughs> Another one that's used this way a lot is tranquility. Oh, that, I still remember the first panic the first full-blown panic attack that I stopped by twisting the lid off Tranquility. I'd only made it about six months before. People I, who I was even surprised aren't that. extremely comfortable in social situations will carry Tranquility with them. We'll talk about some ways to carry it without on, carrying on the a cotton bottle. ball under their watch. It's a lot of people's favorite. Dill is another one that's frequently carried in a pocket, and that's because for people who have blood sugar problems, it can help stabilize the blood sugar problem. Um, yeah, I carry really one of those for a while. It's not one that you're going to want to take a bath in. You don't want to end up smelling like a dill pickle or you know wear it as a perfume, but just to take the lid off and smell it real quick can be really handy. So um, another olfactory way to use essential oils is through a method called inhalation. And this is a great way to break up junk in your lungs if you're getting a head cold that started into your chest. Oils like bree um, Breezy, Aspire. So now I need to communicate more. Exhale. This is exactly what I was typing yesterday. Awesome. <laughs> The, so the only problem with this picture is that she's using a plastic bowl, yeah. <laughs> and I, I couldn't find a picture with a metal bowl or a glass bowl, and I was too lazy to take oh, one. A light cotton thing over your. But you really shouldn't use a plastic bowl. You need to use glass or metal because essential oils will break down the plastic, and then you'll be inhaling that, and that's a bad idea. So <laughs> my favorite way to use this is with a eucalyptus, ravensara, um, oils like Breezy. Mariah. Yeah. Yep. Like and and typically I would be using this for a head cold or a chest cold. Okay, another way, and she was kind of talking about this a little bit, is with an inhaler. And an inhaler can be as simple as a cotton ball. But this inhaler, this particular this inhaler, works well. looks like a chapstick tube. And those cotton tubes are completely replaceable. So you can use it for an oil and then throw the cotton out and use a different 
or a different one or yeah i tend to keep a couple of these i'll have one that um for migraines one that's your dad carried one away. of those faithfully the winter after his burn because his lungs yeah. there's no way had he had he picked up a bacteria gone into his lungs and ammonia there's no way he, just, he carried one of those and if there were any people in his vicinity he was whiffing on it with his deliverance in it good morning from arizona hi virginia thanks for commenting on our thing we appreciate it um another olfactory way to use essential oils though is with a room spray and room sprays for essential oils they're great um, a glass bottle is nice and they sell butterfly spells glass bottles in anything from like two ounces up to eight ounces uh, you do definitely want to have a glass spray bottle and then the next question becomes rather you're going to dilute it or not i almost always dilute mine with water oh, and yeah. in an eight ounce in an eight ounce spray bottle i'll probably put maybe 10 20 drops um, the reason I'd want to do this would be to disinfect carpets, to disinfect curtains without having to take them down and wash them. <laughs> um, couches. For water staining, though. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and so you wouldn't want to use one like Millennia that's blue. Of course, I don't know why you'd want your whole house to smell like Millennia anyway. Um, <laughs> some of my favorites to use are the citruses, lavender. They're, those ones aren't going to stain. I, I love room sprays. Another way to, another reason to use an essential oil in a spray would be for bug repellent purposes. Be Gone is great in a spray bottle. Some people do it, some people don't. My husband does not. I do. It's way too much, and I, I didn't or six is as far as avoiding bug bites. Whatever. <laughs> Deliverance is one of my favorite ones to put in a spray bottle, especially if anybody's sick. I'm spraying everything. I'm spraying countertops. I'm sp yeah. Any surface oh, anybody touches, any, doorknobs. Touch. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's all getting sprayed. Yep. Okay. So that pretty much covers all factory ways to use essential oils. Um, another highly popular way to use essential oils that most people seem to know about is with a massage. Is that the picture I think it is? It is. That is my father, right? About six months after about his burns. six months after his burns. Yeah. His back looks much better now, but hey, that's not too bad. I couldn't get anybody else to burn. pose for a picture. They didn't want their naked back <laughs> in and he was, oh, good grief, I'll do it. So, whatever. It's not too long after that burn. His back, my hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, another popular well-known way to use essential oils is with massage. Um, and this is because, as we talked about before with Hilton's Law of Physics, you can rub essential oils on the muscles and they're going to affect the nerves. They're going to affect the connective tissues as well. They're going to increase the blood flow. They're going to go everywhere. But they're also going to affect the emotions. So mm -hmm. yep. pretty cool. Um, and since they affect the emotions, I've, I've got this chart real quick. You might want to take a screenshot with your cell phone if you oh, want. Nice. But this is really cool. And you can do this either way. You could use you could say, okay, I'm having difficulty expressing feelings, so I'm going to use this oil that I know helps with that. And where am I going to put it? Oh, I'm going to put it on the back of my neck. Okay. Or you could look at it and say, the back of my neck is tight and sore. What What? What do you think is going on? You go, oh, I need to find an oil for that helps with expressing feelings. And you can kind of go back and forth with it. Some people will go, okay, this part of my body is hurting, so I'm going to look at the emotions. And some people will come up with their emotions and where do I put this? <laughs> so it's kind of a cool chart. Yeah, I haven't looked at that. For a long time huh? yeah, even though i created it <laughs> yeah yeah it's been a while it is kind of a fun one um just want to make sure i covered everything on that screen that i wanted to yes okay um but with massage a lot of times that brings up the question of carrier oils and carrier oils we're gonna, we're gonna go through this really quick but because of the molecular structure of essential oils the molecules are really small and the chemical structure is very simple they absorb very readily into the body through the skin this effect can actually be increased when you use an essential oil because it slows the absorption down and it also keeps the top notes from getting too hot. My dad likes to describe it. Go ahead, tell him. Dumping, it's like if you use your essential oils without a carry oil, it's like dumping, rubbing alcohol on a hot cement surface. Doesn't it absorb. Just, it flies it into the air, it evaporates quickly. Our body's some, are pretty warm. Some of the high notes on a, a warm body will do the same thing. But if you stabilize them with a the carrier oil, then they're you held against the skin long enough to absorb. Of course, that leads to the point of why not just put your carrier oils and your essential oils together so you don't have to have two bottles. Well, that's because the essential oils will donate their molecules to the carrier. Which breaks down clear. faster. Yeah, it, it'll break them down. You can You can do that for a few days. But not not very long. Not very long. So I learned that the hard way when I was brand new to the whole thing of oil. After I'd made my first six blends, I bought a spice rack and some little bottles, and I mixed, mixed my oil. oils into the carrier, and I lined them up along the spice rack so the kids could come in and use them with that. <laughs> and even my 
fairly untrained nose at that time knew within six weeks I had made a mess. <laughs> yeah. So. It's one thing you want to watch for when you're buying essential oils too. If they're cut, if you if there's sunflower or coconut or palm they leaves in the there, carrier oil on the label, and it took them longer than six weeks to get it from their shop to, to you. the store to you. You're, you've and then lost. you've only got six weeks to use it, which but essential oils sad. are so amazing that there's even enough left there that diluted oils. I hear people tell me all the time the wonderful the results they get. But I promise you're getting 50% of what you could have. <laughs> okay. One question I get a lot though is how do you know which is which carrier oil to use? Butterfly currently carries over 30. Oh, I was on the phone the other day and somebody <laughs> asked me if we carried one and I didn't have a clue, you know. I mean that butterfly and I don't we know. We use the same four or five all <laughs> the time. My favorite. I got woke up this morning really early by my daughter looking for a carrier oil to use with woman wise. And I was too tired and too lazy to get out of bed. I figure she's 15, she can handle yeah, it, she right? She can handle it. Well, I come down later. Well, I got up and got myself dressed. I'm like, oh, good. It's one of my nightstand. I'm sure she found one. I went to the bathroom. Oh, there's another one. And then I get downstairs and I said, did you find a carrier oil? No, I couldn't find one. <laughs> Why not? Because all she was she looking for damage. was palm or coconut. <laughs> and the ones that she'd run into were, let's see, one of them was mullein. Probably had an arnica sitting around. Somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember what the other one was. <laughs> but yeah, they weren't carrier oils that she recognized, so she didn't use them. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you can find is what you should use in most instances. Now, there are a few, if you're doing eczema, there's some great ones for eczema and palm is probably not in the top 10. Um, so <laughs> if I was doing eczema, I would probably switch to Tamanu. Tamanu is a little gritty. I really like Marula. Yeah, um, I haven't used Marula yet. So. Marula is pretty cool and it actually absorbs fairly fast. I should try that. There's different ways. Then you also have people who are allergic to nuts. So in those instances, sunflower becomes a great option. Um, but almost everybody can handle palm and coconut. They're actually made from the fruit, not the nut part of it. It's not actually a nut, it's a fruit. So most people are okay with that. Although I do know some kid, one, one young man with peanut allergies that can't use coconut. Yeah. So understood that it does connection. happen. Sunflower is a great alternative. Um, Arnica is another example of when you would want to, it's a flower. So I mean, you're using the stems and the leaves. So there's no nut connection there. So. Yeah, but it's for bruising. So if you've got a pretty good bruise and you're putting oils on it for pain relief, Arnica would be a number one choice. And it might be worth going to find because it really helps with the swelling <laughs> and the bruising. And, and that's one that when I need Arnica, I need Arnica. That's the only one. I'm, yep. Okay. One thing that is not often understood by people who are using essential oils for massage is that you can use a process called layering. So we're going to talk about massage and layering. And basically what layering is, is it is the process of applying more than one oil at a time. And the way that you do this is you put some carrier oil in your hand, you add a couple drops of oil and you rub it on. You wait mm, 10, 15 seconds and you use the next one, neat. And what neat means, which we're going to cover a little bit more in depth later, is that you're putting it on straight. You're not using more carrier oil because if you did that with four or five oils, you're going to get a pretty little greasy. Little oil. Okay, yeah. some instances and some reasons that you might want to layer would be with pain and warm down. Pain is going to help bring oxygen to the area. It's going to help with the pain relief and warm down is an anti-inflammatory. So I would use both to get both um, benefits. Another instance would be with deeper and woman wise, in which case I am intentionally using Arnica here <laughs> because the deeper is going to help with the deep menstrual cramps and the woman wise is going to help balance the hormones. I want them both. I want the Arnica in there just for the swelling because and the bruising. Besides swelling and bruising, it's an anti-inflammatory all, yeah. all of its own. So, so I mean, but if but if I can only find palm, I'm not probably going to look for it very long. <laughs> Get them thrown on there. Look for it later. So that's my, probably my two favorite instances of layering. There's some things out there. Raindrop therapy is pretty popular, where they're basically building a blend on your body. Awfully lot of oil. It's a lot of oil. <laughs> Blends are safer for that very yeah. reason. So, all right. So. Massage is actually a method of using essential oils called topical. Um, and so we're going to go through some topical applications and ways to use essential oils. Massage being the most popular and the second one being on the feet. And the reason that you would want to use essential oils on your feet, you started to tell them about this one earlier. Because the, the bottoms of the feet have very large pores. They do. And as they absorb into the feet, what you have is a return venous system taking the blood back to the heart. 
and it gathers up everything from the lymph, it gathers up everything from the small capillaries, and it takes it with it. Yep. So oils put on the feet diffuse through the body more rapidly than applying them anywhere else. <laughs> the feet are also less likely to be sensitive. If you put an essential oil on somewhere that maybe irritates the skin a little bit, the feet are not going to be that place. Very, very rarely. Very rarely. Another reason to put them on the feet would be, say, a child who you're putting millennia and tranquility on them, because going to school is, is hard on them emotionally. They don't want to go to school smelling like a nerve shop or a floral shop. So you put them on their feet, put their socks on, and it off school. That's what you do. And it's so easy. You know, one thing people don't think about it, people tell me all the time, I'll say, well, put some in the tub. And they'll say, well, I don't take baths. I take showers. Well, fine. Throw a couple of drops of oil there, the too. <laughs> but that's like a I totally said, I didn't different. This one, so. nope. <laughs> all right. Out of order so here. another topical way to use essential oils is with acupressure points. And I happen to pick a picture of an ear, but acupressure points are everywhere. If it's something that you've studied, essential oils are amazing on acupressure points. And frankly, I prefer to put an oil on a pressure point or acupressure point than a needle. <laughs> an, an acupressure point, just for an illustration, is the heart one right there. Yeah, it's a good In, one. Inside out or easy traveler on that one. If you have a person who gets motion sick, it's yeah. amazing. You've got you've got the oils for the motion sickness, but you've got the oils for the emotion that's creating the yeah. motion sickness. So, I mean, if you, yeah, a little study of Chinese medicine. Goes there on. are several good books that show charts and points. Um, there's the one that's called Reference Guide for Essential Oils by Connie and, Connie and Alan Higley. And that one, wait a minute. Yeah, that's yeah, and then releasing emotional patterns like Carolyn with essential oils, and that one's carolamine. So have we ever put the the mushu points and those ten golden points that did I ever make that? They're in one blog? of the blogs that we just did. Yeah, those They're, the headache blogs. They're in the the the, okay. the traditional Chinese that, that's medicine. Excellent. The blog. The, the, it says ten golden points, but I didn't limit myself to ten. I think there's fourteen. No. <laughs> yeah, all of the headache blogs have some corresponding very, very simple points that adding a little oil to yeah. would be very effective. Except this one on the in inner campus of the eye. Please don't put don't put oil right <laughs> close to your <laughs> eyes very carefully. <laughs> uh, so another topical way to use essential oils is with wash. You can either add them to soap, but we're gonna get there later and. And there's a couple <laughs> things we need to know about that, but using them neat. So I have essential oils that sit by my sink. And when I'm washing my hands, if I feel like I've been into something really nasty, I'll add a drop of the water and finish washing yeah, my hands. And while you're soaping your hands up. Yeah. So using them neat is a topical way to use them. And the number one reason to use an essential oil neat would be on a cut or an abrasion. You're going to get the benefits of cleaning out the cut. You're going to get it starting to close. Um, there's a lot of oils that are good for this, but yarrow is far and away better than any of them. Yarrow is another one and it's cheaper, but I absolutely, Yarrow's, Yarrow's what I'm going to use. I could tell you stories all day about Yarrow, but oh, we both could. And then we're just going to limit it. ourselves to a couple. I think, I don't know. <laughs> gonna use? That's a good question. I think two weeks ago I told him the story about my finger, so we probably won't do that one. No. <laughs> that one was, that was a lot of fun. Um, so my parents have vaulted ceilings in their house. <laughs> and when they were putting the wood up, they did wood wood planks, wood panels. And my dad would stand on the ladder, and I would hand the panels up. And I, they're, they're six feet long. I'd have to hold it up just as high as I could, and he'd grab the top of it. And that, that's how tall their ceilings are in that upper part of that room. Well, Let's try to get a couple of stuff. I thought he had a hold of it, and he didn't. And it came right back down, and it cut me right below my eye right here. Ha ha. It cut a perfect V shape. And I'm like, you know, it, it hurt. It hurt really good because it hit that bone, too. But it I was pretty worried about a scar and it was bleeding pretty good. And my mom dumps yarrow on it. Of course, that close to my eye, it went right in my <laughs> eye. It hurt. <laughs> it hurt a lot. And milk, by the way, is the answer to that. <laughs> and uh, But I don't even have a scar at all. It was absolutely wonderful. It pulled it just absolutely neatly closed. So I saw your dad one day slice his knuckles pretty thoroughly and soak a napkin in Yarrow. in yarrow and stuff it in the inside of his glove put his glove back on and go, go to work. work by the time he got home there was i mean you could move the knuckle even without splitting oh. wasn't okay. all that sanitary the napkin from around the chicken he was eating for lunch but you know it worked <laughs> in a hurry um the the most amazing story i've ever seen with yarrow was the day that i dropped my kids off at the haircutting place and then went across the street to walmart to do my shopping well no i didn't I, I drove into the parking lot and sent them across the street teenagers you can make it and it says go get your haircut and i did all my shopping and showed up at the haircutting place and they weren't there so i says well did they ever come were they ever no nope, they'd never seen them so I went back to Walmart, looked around. I finally found them in the bathroom. My daughter had been running across the street, and there was a ditch, and she had jumped it, 
and her sandal had caught. And so she landed in the ditch instead of making it to the other side. Well, in the ditch, which happened to be full of nasty, dirty water and floating garbage, there it had a sprinkler pipe break and it had backed up. And so, oh, she had landed on the sprinkler head and sliced the bottom of her foot open. That thing was bleeding like a stuck pig. And I'm looking at that nasty water and thinking, mm -hmm. uh, no, I was 45 minutes from home and I did not have yarrow on me, which is not a mistake that I make anymore when traveling with children. Yeah. I went to the <laughs> local store and bought it. It was very expensive. Ouch. <laughs> Our own brand. Well, oh, I bought my own brand, brand of course, because I happened to know where it would be. So that was fun. Anyway, I've dumped that, that on the foot, it closed it up, it quit bleeding. She continued to wear that sandal the rest of the day because we didn't really have much to deal with it. I did get a big, one of those big band-aids to put over the top of it. And it healed up beautifully. We never saw any sign of infection. It was amazing. Well, you didn't put it right directly on when the cut happened either. No, it, that, it was those edges that had minutes. some oxygen and had some, some death and trauma. That's an impressive the story. The faster that you can get it on, the better you are. That's true. So, all right. That was our wonderful stories about neat. <laughs> Another great way to use essential oils is in a lotion or a salve. And in a deep cut, an open wound, like with my finger, I put yarrow on it and I held it on there with eyes for... Mm, 36 hours I think it was about 36 hours mm -hmm. then I switched and I went to a salve and I would add the essential oil to the salve um, at that point I was probably doing heliochrism because it's a little higher in the cytophylactic properties it doesn't have the ability to close the wound quite as yeah, neatly okay. as yarrow so I started with the yarrow but I switched over to heliochrism lavender whatever's around for me it's not gonna be lavender because I'm not a fan of the smell but that's a great way to use it a reason that you'd want to use them in lotions is for the skin properties they make absolutely wonderful anti-aging things. Ageless is one of my favorites, which is why I pictured that one. Um, they can also be used as a perfume. And in that instance, almost always you would use them neat, just a couple of drops on your wrist or on the back of your, behind your ears. Um, some some great ones for perfumes, um, Cadence and Sega Lily are the two that I picked. And the reason I did this is because Cadence is the one my husband wears and so I think of that one as a cologne. Um, I pick Sago Lily because if I'm going to wear an essential oil as a perfume, which I don't typically because I'm around essential oh, oils so much. We, we smell like essential oils. <laughs> I smell like essential oils anyway. I'm not likely. <laughs> Clothes in my closet smell like essential oils. But Sago Lily would be my favorite one for that. My husband's the one he likes is, is letting go. That's his favorite. He tries to get letting go. everybody to wear that one. Yeah, there are so many that make great perfumes, but Sega Lily is probably my all-time favorite. All right, as a compress. Now, an essential oil compress is like one of the most relaxing ways to use essential oil. And making a compress is really simple. You fill a bowl, and again, not a plastic one, <laughs> with hot water, and you add a couple of drops of oil, whatever one you want, and you swish it around vigorously to get the oil into the water. And then you just wait. And after a few minutes, those oil molecules are going to rise to the top. You probably won't be able to see them because essential oils are not actually oily. So they don't really separate, they just kind of rise to the top. You lay your cloth over the top of the bowl and let it soak up that rich essential oily water and then you put it on wherever you'd want um, your compress. The heat carries it into and the body. And heat is wonderful. So adding a hot pack. Um, um, starting with warm water. Yep. So no, lavender heat to keep it warm. would make a great compress for headaches. Um, woman wise would make a great compress for menstrual cramps. You're, you're getting the idea. Kind of you know, whatever oil you would have put there anyway, just do it as a compress to help. The water water is absolutely amazing, which we're going to get to. I remember the book, first book I bought on that topic, The Magic of Water and how much water is the world's greatest carrier for oil. And we'll get into <laughs> that. And our next two that we're going to talk about for topical waste essential oils, they kind of go into that water. It's, it's kind of a gray area, but I wasn't quite ready to switch gears yet. So <laughs> as a shampoo or a scalp treatment and you're going to love the two I picked to put here, and I'm sure you already figured out why I picked them. Yes. Okay. But with shampoo, you want to be really careful because if, remember that they carry things into that, into that limbic system of the brain and they cross that blood-brain barrier. So if your shampoos are full of dyes and chemicals and junk, you're going to carry oh, that in your too. essential oils are full of chemicals. That, that's that's true. There you so are. you need quality essential oils and you need a decent shampoo if you're going to do this. But um, why would you want to use essential oils in your hair? Well, maybe you want to do it for a scalp treatment to get rid of dandruff, or um, maybe you're trying to make your hair stronger. Frankincense is my favorite one for that, by the way. Really? Yeah, I used it for quite a while when I was trying to get my hair to grow longer and thicker. But um, the two that I probably use the most in my hair are 
chamomile German, which I have not used since I was a girl, young, young girl. My mom was using it to keep herself from going gray. I thought this was a wonderful idea. Actually, I had, my hair had gone darker brown, too, long before I went gray, and yeah. I always considered myself a blonde. So, but she's using it to that. not go gray, and her hair was so shiny and thick and beautiful. Well, I'm going to use it, too. Well, I didn't know was that it was going to make my hair lighter. So I thought it was the summer sun that was doing that. I did. I, I'm really, really dark. dark. <laughs> and then it would grow out, and the bottom parts would be blonde, but the parts going in would be darker. <laughs> yeah, I looked like a skunk for a while. So my mom and I fun. went to work and said, and figure out what, you know, if I couldn't use her chamomile, what could I use for my hair? And rosemary actually has properties to make your hair darker, which some of my blonde children, I don't have any dark hair children, all my girls are blonde, have actually used, and their hair right. is darker. Pasha's, it's not like mine. Pasha's, Pasha's a little darker. A little darker, but they're all, they're all blonde or dishwater blonde. <laughs> but, so you can Rude. use German chamomile to get rid of gray hairs, and to make your hair more blonde. You can use rosemary to make your hair darker, and again, it still I gets just have grace. to tell you that I grew Roman chamomile for years. And wash your hair and my sister-in-law would say, just when they got pretty with the little flowers, I would chop their off. heads off and, and wash my hair in it. This is the same so sister-in-law that was washing her hair in beer? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That'd be nice. <laughs> um, but I can't tell you how happy I was to find chamomile essential oil and stuff drying chamomile flowers and making a tea every time I wash my hair. And, you know, yeah, oil is so much easier. Yeah. So shampoos and compresses are two topical ways to use essential oils. They also fall into our next category, and that is the magic of water and water application. We'll go into some methods, but before we do, we want to talk about why. Why you would want to use water and why it's magic in our opinion. Um, do you want to do this one or do you want well, to? Well, I don't know. I don't know what you've got over there, but I'll tell you what I think. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I could do that any day of the week. One of the benefits of water is the way it absorbs. If you're fighting a foot fungus, you can dump deliverance oil on your toenails all day and you will win, or at least it will look like it. But as the toenail grows out, what was underneath the nail bed, what was under. Uh, but if you soak the feet in water for five, ten minutes twice a day, you will beat that fungus totally. Yeah. And it will not come back because the water has carried the oil. Unless places. it's systemic. Now, we, we talk about how oils go all over the body, and they do, and they travel through the body. But I don't know. I've seen toenail funguses. They respond they better do. to being soaked with water. When I get really desperate to get rid of something, yeah, I'm going to use water. water. I do the same thing if I'm getting, like I had an abscess above a tooth, and I put the oil in water and swished it all over my mouth, and I'll, yeah. it went away. I mean, you know, so water carries it. Essential oils are magnified by water. And that's a good word. That pretty much sums it up. This is kind of how I think about it. Okay, we know that water is a conductor of electricity. Ah. We also know that the human brain is 90% water. Essential oils. The whole body is a pretty high percent of water. And essential so. oils are electric in nature. So if, if water magnifies electricity, it's going to magnify essential oils. I get all the time, I'll tell people to go home, take a bath, and two or three drops of an oil, and they're like, oh, two or three drops is just going to get lost in my tub. The average bathtub is 40 gallons. So <laughs> a couple of <laughs> drops of water to a bathtub, are you, it's, yeah, that's just not going to help me. Yes. That is not true because the oil is magnified by water. Now, the best example that I can think of of this is my poor brother who, for some reason, needed a bath in a couple of drops of peppermint. And I, everybody, we stress it to him, a couple of drops is all that you want. And he got home and looked at that big bathtub full of water and thought, a couple of drops is just mm -mm, not going to do it. And he used more than that. I don't know how much he used, but it took a lot of milk to get some areas to stop burning. Then there was the man <laughs> who wanted some ginger. He heard great things about ginger baths. And I told him. Put some on a toothpick and squirrel it into your tub. Powder. No, no. He Powder put about eight or ten <laughs> drops. And, but he didn't. He only stayed in the tub up to about here. Oh. Which means he opened all. But he didn't open it. To, he had a the migraine head. for the next three days. It took weeks before he would use an essential oil again. It really. And all I could say every time I saw was wag my finger and say, I told you so. <laughs> Two or three drops. And some oils, the One. really strong ones, I, like ginger I and peppermint. Never use, I don't use One. ginger oil in the tub. Millennia, I'll use a couple of drops. Um, but for the most part, no. Okay, so let's talk about different ways that you can use water. And we've kind of already hit this one with, with baths. My favorite oil to bath in is sago lily. 
I love taking a bath in Sago Lily, uh, but I also bath in Millennia frequently because of the ability that it has to realign. I just structures. open my cupboard and see which one's yelling, pick me, pick, pick me, me, and that's me. what I use. <laughs> I've really been enjoying Faith lately, too, in bathtubs. Um, but I like Whispering Hope, too. It's awesome. Millennia, for some reason, and maybe it's because I use more than a couple of drops. Millennia is not one that's going to irritate if you use too much because mm -hmm. it's, it's not an overly strong oil. to your sister-in-law. But I will break out in hives. Just because she got out of the tub. I can rub it on my entire body with the carrier oil and be just fine. But if I use it in the bathtub, I will get hives across my lower stomach. Unless oh. I use it with a bath bomb. Huh. And for some reason, I don't. Now, one time, I didn't have a bath bomb and I desperately needed to take a bath in Millennia. Or oh, so, in the tub. I, I squirted some carrier oil in the tub and it did help. So it's something it about seem. having some oil to slow the absorption, I think is what, for me. I've actually heard of a couple people who have problems with millennia in the bathtub. The hives only lasted maybe 10 minutes, but it's just to make, you know, I think what it is is it's too much healing too fast. I think so. <laughs> so, okay, slow a foot absorption. bath. You don't have to bath your whole body. You can just, you don't have to put a flower in the tub. No, you don't. But I thought it was a pretty picture. <laughs> it is a cute picture. <laughs> um, some of my favorite oils to use in foot baths would be letting go, revitalize, and of course, the no more for athletes' foot or foot. You no, know, an fingers. odd one that we don't think about or use as often as I think we should is Journey. Now it's mm. strong. There's some there's some strong oils drops. in there. <laughs> a couple of drops. But one of the pluses of Journey is it causes the body to expel, expel dead tissue. Expel dead tissue. And yeah. It makes a wonderful foot soap, but don't be surprised if the effects you see are <laughs> a little bit of cleansing going on. on the eyebrow or you know somewhere. Because expelling dead tissue is an yep. interesting thing. So that means it's going to have some kind of an effect on your kidneys too, as your kidneys deal with what you just don't. You know, I, I love soap in my feet and journey. That's yep. a fast way. I mean, had some heart issues. There's a little scar tissue, and that that became a go-to for me was to soap my feet and journey. Yeah. I've actually had that test up a few times for the bathtub. Well, so it's nice you have an I do. scar from a... <laughs> I do. Yeah. So a hot tub or a jacuzzi, and I get asked this a lot, can you use essential oils in your hot tub or jacuzzi? And a lot of hot tubs or jacuzzi they're put in your bathtub, the instructions will actually say not to use essential oils in them. And the reason for this is because so many oils are cut with carriers, and that's not good for your jets. I'll use them in my bathtub carrier oils, and she but I don't turn jetted, the jets on. She has the jetted tub. So funny story. I'd had my jetted tub about a year and I was talking to my friend and she says, oh, I hate my, I hate my tub. And I says, why? And she goes, because every few weeks I have to clean it out with bleach. And I'm thinking, why do you have to? Because it smells so bad if you don't. And she's just, you know, so she's going to say, it's not that hard. Oil it and clean those <laughs> it's not hard. She says, I just fill it up with hot water, add some bleach and let the jets run for 10 minutes. But I, I forget. And then the next bath I take smells like bleach. And I'm thinking, I've had one for a year and I've never done that. I don't think my bathtub smells particularly bad. I thought, huh. And that's the difference is that I was running jetted oils through my tub on a regular basis. Yeah, and your brother they were and he deliberately ran oils through to keep the jets clean. To keep the jets clean, yeah. That's what he did. I've, I've never that read bleach through my jets. And I've now <laughs> had it for years and years and years. But I'd, I hadn't even thought about it until she said that. And I One thought, of the reasons I huh. use essential oils in my dishwasher is to, just keep, to keep it clean. Keep it clean. Yeah. We're going to get there, too. <laughs> of <Okay>. course. <laughs> I didn't read your blog. Sorry. <laughs> well, I took it right out of your book. So, <laughs> okay. You can use essential oils in the shower. Um, I figured if I couldn't hold my own on this topic, I'd be We're in big quit. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, I mean, you can just drop them in the bottom of the tub and let them steam up into your face. But if you really want to, you can put a stopper in the tub and let a couple inches I, I build like up. I like to do that, have a couple inches. Yeah. There's the actually, um, we're working on, and, and I it's a work in progress, making a shower steamer. It's like a little tablet that you can put. Like It's kind of like a bath bomb, but oh, it doesn't have all of the... Wonderful things that. that bath bombs have because you're not soaking in it, so you don't need all the skin things. It's just a way of making the essential oil break down slower. So I've actually been playing with them. I don't have the world's greatest uh -huh. shower at the moment, but they're going to be cool. They're going to be called shower steamers, and hopefully that How we'll fun. get those up and going for too long. Yeah, I'm really excited about them. Okay, so miscellaneous ways to use essential oils. Um, you can gargle with essential oils. It doesn't take much, and it, and you do want to spit it back out. You're not going to swallow it, but reason you might want to do this is um, some essential oils to kill like gingivitis. Favorite ones for that would be... I was so grateful that I was doing this with deliverance for that abscess when the whole place decided to fall over with the flu one by one and I'd been doing it already. For you didn't get it. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> I have my kids... I got lasted 
four hours and I didn't throw up so. instead of two or three days. Yeah. <laughs> I have my kids goggle with spearmint because it's supposed to help rebuild enamel on the teeth. Mm -hmm. um, I've had them do deliverance when there's something going around the rest of the house. Like, hey, let's stop the lesson. Let's go through the whole house. Yeah. Um, some people like to mix the oil into a teaspoon of honey or add a little bit of lemon to it. I don't. I want to leave my mouth clean. But well, the taste is there for a bit. Tender care is one that is used by a lot of people, as is deliverance for gingivitis and receding gums and that type of thing. Yep. You can actually use essential oils on your toothbrush, um, but because essential oils break down plastic, I tend to put my toothpaste on first and then put the oil on the toothpaste rather than the toothbrush. I intend, I usually brush my teeth and then wash it's my mouth with oil and water. That's, yeah. But but there are people who don't gargle and they're not going to take the time to, and so they just add it to the toothbrush. I've done both, just depending on where I'm at and my yeah. my particular mood. Okay, um, I told you we'd get dishwasher. Oh, ah, dish yeah. I don't have a dishwasher, so but I do add essential oils to my dish water, especially when people are sick. Just adding a drop to the water and making sure that everything is clean and we're not passing the sickness on that way. And I'm careful with my dishwasher. I don't use any strong oils. I may use lime or lemons ones. or orange. And only a drop or two. And I don't do that. Anymore. I use the citrus ones most of the time, but when when there's sickness going yeah, on, I switch sickness, to deliverance. I'll right? probably I'll switch to no more because <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get real serious. There you go. <laughs> get more serious than deliverance or serious. Another great way to use essential oils is in your washer you and your dryer, and you can add them right to the water. But what I'll do is I'll pick an article of clothing that I don't care if gets stained, like a washcloth or a dish towel. Or I use sunburst things that don't things stain. that don't stain. I've never actually had anything stained, but I'm not going to intentionally put the oil on my favorite shirt. Well, if you <laughs> happen to do that, I was working a show once when Sharon was shaking a, a millennia and it splashed and all over her white blouse. And I send her out with a bottle of lemon just into the restroom. She pulled off that white t-shirt. Mm. She, she had a it was a jumper, so she still was fairly dressed. And she filled a sink full of water, dumped some lemon oil in it, and worked that shirt and came back a little damp, but no stain from the blue. So That's if awesome. you do happen to stain your clothes playing with oil in the washer, just just work it with lemon. Citruses yeah, are my right. favorite ones to use, but I tend to use whatever has been misblended. That's just what I do. <laughs> um, but I have intentionally the last few weeks been using Christmas in the air, and I love all my clothes smell like pine and Christmas. Oh, fun. And, no, oh. I'm still using a four ounce that got messed up. Yeah. It's been down in my washer for Be a while. Be down there for a while. <laughs> so three or four drops just on an article of clothing that's going into the washing machine. Um, to use them on a dryer ball is really simple. I love these wool dryer balls. I think you can get them from Amazon, but I was I was given I was some. given some for Christmas too by an employee, so it was really cool. <laughs> and I just drop them right out of the dryer ball and throw it in there. So I, I love my dryer balls. Okay, cooking with essential oils. Now there are recipes out there that call for essential oils in cooking, and they're not talking about essential oils. They may call them essential oils, but they're talking about cooking oils. They've been cut by a carrier oil. And so when it calls for... they literally used an oil and soaked the lemon rind in it or soaked yeah. whatever in it. That's different. Trust me on that. I it, They're way too strong and they're way too much. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make your own. You can't. You could buy a two-ounce thing of almond oil and you could add a couple drops of rosemary to it and now you have a cooking oil and you could use a teaspoon of that in it. <laughs> <laughs> because out of the entire two-ounce bottle, there's only two drops of rosemary My in My first there. experience with this happened to be frosting. Ah, uh, water yes. is a little orange flavor to it, and so I put a couple of three drops of orange oil in it. It's not edible anymore. A um, couple of two pound packages of powdered sugar later, later with enough frosting to last me a year because we don't eat all that. We should just it. start it over. Yeah, I should have just started so, over. <laughs> I do use essential oils in my frosting. I will use orange, lemon, um, lime is one of my favorites. Cilantro. We live away from town and I want to make salsa. I will put cilantro on a toothpick. Yep. That's how we do it. stir it in there. And if I don't like it's not enough, I'll put a little more. Yep. But I never dump it directly. <laughs> never, ever. No, it's, be a disaster. it's way, way, way strong. <laughs> uh, yeah. So go easy. There's a lot of fun things you can do with essential oils cooking, but we're talking half a drop. Okay. <laughs> I make crepes and it calls the recipe calls for lemon extract. And I swear I'm always out at the most inopportune times. And I have been known to use just a tiny bit of lemon essential oil yeah. in place of it. I don't use what it calls for for lemon extract, but, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I do put a little bit in there. My kids miss it when I don't. So, yeah. all right. You can use essential oils for water purification. Um, this is how I do it with a big five gallon thing of water. And I'm doing a couple <laughs> of drops. My favorite is lime. I love lime and water, but grapefruit and lemon are very popular as well. 
Great but it really, I mean, one or two drops in a five gallon bucket. We used to have a oh, distiller yeah. back in the day and we thought that was the way to go. And I used to clean it just by putting seven or eight drops in the distiller and running a batch through it. And yeah. it kept that distiller wonderful. Of course, the next batch or two of water tasted a little like the grapefruit or the lime that I had used. You know? <laughs> but it worked good. Yeah. Okay, you have made it to the end of our presentation. Really? We appreciate you joining us. Um, we do have a Facebook group that is Butterfly Expressions slash EO, and you can follow us on that page. You can ask questions. There's people on there that, that can answer, and there's a lot of smart people on there, and we answer as many as we possibly can. But yes, and so often, by the time I see them, smart people have answered everything I would have thought of, and a couple of extra things. And I, yeah, I <laughs> so get ideas on there all the time. We appreciate you people out there monitoring that. That is wonderful. What a resource you are for each other. That's right. So, yeah, be sure to take a look at that and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you. It's it's been fun. If anybody has any questions, feel free to comment on this and we'll get to them as we can. Thank you much.